Good morning. Welcome to this reflection for Good Friday. A couple of hymns, a thought for the day and some prayers as we come before the cross of Jesus. As we come before him with our faults and failings, the faults and failings of the world which we all share, which put him there. And somehow we see there his love for us. Let's just give a moment of quiet prayer before we begin with the hymn, O Sacred Head, Surrounded. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From Luke's Gospel, we hear his version of the story of that first Good Friday. Then the whole assembly rose and led Jesus off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Christ, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, he stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. 
On hearing this, Pilate asked if this man were a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he'd been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some miracle. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers and the people, and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice, they cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time, he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts they insistently demanded that he be crucified. And their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. The time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ, the God of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he'd said this, he breathed his last. 
The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea and was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. This is the passion of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In this thy bitter passion, good shepherd, think on me. So say the words of that hymn, O Sacred Head Surrounded. But doesn't that seem a bit self-centred, a bit much to ask? Jesus is dying in torment on the cross, and we ask him to think of us. Turn your attention here. If you visit someone dying of cancer in the hospice, would it be appropriate to say, no, start thinking about my troubles. Tell them your problems. Think of your sorrow and pain. Never mind theirs. Even worse, when someone is being tortured to death in one of the cruelest and most painful ways ever contrived by human beings. Think of me as you hang there, Lord. But Jesus did think of us on the cross. The dying thief, who to be sure had similar problems to Jesus at that moment, he asked Jesus to think of him. And Jesus did. He found it in him to speak words of love to a dying thief, even in his own agony. He spoke love even in the hour of his death. Most of us in that situation would retreat completely into ourselves, into our pain. Our suffering becomes a black hole that sucks everything in. But as I read recently, God is the exact opposite of a black hole. Instead of sucking everything in irresistibly, God gives out irresistibly. God is a continual pouring out of love for the world, and nothing in the universe can escape that love. Something about Jesus draws love out of us and transforms us into those who continually give out love, even when it costs even the thief on the cross found it possible, in the midst of his agony, to think of others, to think of Jesus, to rebuke the other thief who was mocking him. To understand that this man was innocent of any crime and was suffering for an entirely different reason. But it doesn't appear that the thief started that way. The other Gospels say they both hurled insults at Jesus. Presumably this thief started by hurling insults too. If you're the Messiah, save yourself and us while you're at it. It's the continual cry of the unbeliever. If you're real God, put an end to this suffering. If you were real God, you could prevent suffering, couldn't you? If you're really the Son of God, you could do something about this. But he is doing something about it in the only way that could ever really make a difference. He is suffering with us. He is transforming the suffering into a victory of love over hate, into a victory of love even over death. That's not something the rational mind can grasp. It's not neat and tidy. It won't be fitted into our mental boxes. 
But as we look on Jesus on the cross, like the thief, we start to see with our hearts rather than our minds. We start to see something else. We see the love of God. We see what it costs God to go on loving us when we ignore or reject that love. As we look at the cross, we are drawn out of ourselves and into God. And we are changed into his likeness, willing to suffer for truth and love rather than build the world around our comfort. As we look at the cross, we start to understand we are not just looking at something awful that happened to one man 2,000 years ago, though we are looking at that. We are also looking through a window into the very heart of God. And as we see that, we find it very appropriate to ask the suffering God to think of us in our troubles and weaknesses and failures and sins. Because he has beaten them. He can beat them for us and in us too. What we are seeing is God thinking of us in the midst of torture, saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. As we come before the cross on Good Friday, let us pray that Jesus would think of us. And let's think of him and of God, his heavenly Father, suffering the unimaginable agony of watching. Let's pray the love of God poured out there would soften us, break us open, change us, until we too are poured out the love of God into the world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, even in your deepest agony, you listen to the crucified thief. Hear us as we unburden to you our deepest fears. You spoke words of love in the hour of your death. Help us to speak words of life to a dying world. To you, Jesus, who offer hope to the hopeless, be honour and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Our prayers are interspersed with the chant, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. joys and sorrows, our weakness and failure, and our deliberate sins, the wounds we carry, whether inflicted by the word of, by the world or by others, or self-inflicted. Let's hold ourselves before Jesus for healing and transformation.
us hold before God the church in all its human failings, a human institution made up of human beings like us, and yet carrying like treasure in clay jars the message of God in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Let's pray for Jesus to remember the church, our little churches, and the national and worldwide church. Jesus, remember me. hold before God the world, suffering from coronavirus and from human greed and selfishness and sin, all the things that sent Jesus to the cross. Let us lay before the cross those places where there is violence and poverty and climate-driven disaster. before God, any we know who need our prayers. Let's name them in our hearts. Let us hold before God those who have died, whether long ago or recently, those we personally grieve for, and also all those who died in the pandemic, and those who grieve for them. Let us hold them before the dying Jesus, as he takes on death for us all and defeats it on the cross. Jesus, you bled in pain as the nails were driven into your flesh. Transform, through the mystery of your love, the pain of those who suffer. To you, Jesus, our crucified Lord, be honour and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Final hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Just. 
Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.